obviously uh, sleeping. They're trying their best to make sure that food still comes to the tables and to the markets. However, they're faced with another devastating outbreak, swarms of desert locust. The Red Cross fears that the new swarms could spark widespread crop loss and deepen already the serious levels of food insecurity. And to speak to us about this, we have Honorable Vincent Bamlangachi Sempija, the Minister of Agriculture, Animal as uh, Industry and, and Fisheries. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning, my brother. Um, it's an honor to have you this morning. Uh, we are really pushing on. I'm okay. Okay. Honorable, I just want to touch base fast forward. Um, how are we holding up with regards to the locusts? I understand the, the previous uh, uh, the previous presser you talked to us, you said we had a new swarm that was in the northeast. Uh, we want to understand how are we holding up as a nation regarding the locusts? Yeah, surely the locusts uh, have invaded us again, mm -hmm. as I told you earlier on. And uh, we, we, this time we were more prepared again. And uh, our teams are on the ground. UPDF is on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority is on the ground. Our extension teams and our technical teams, including our friends, our partners, mm -hmm. the FAO team, the DLCO, World Food Program, we are all on the ground there, including our technical team from Maiu. Mm -hmm. So, we are handling the situation, but uh, it's a bit more difficult this time because the swarms are bigger and uh, much more younger, and therefore they are, they are destroying people's crops. We understand some of the challenges you're facing with the lockdown is the, uh, the inability to move with the pesticides, especially now that the country is on lockdown. The plane is in Nairobi. So how are you holding up with regards to fighting the locusts? The, uh, the plane, uh, of course, the aircraft is at uh, Ladwo mm. or Lodwa. Mm. Lodwa is near, our, uh, near the border with uh, Karamoja, mm. with Uganda, Kenya and Uganda. There is a small airfield there where it is, it, where it is operating from. In fact, it is working. Okay. It is uh, because DLCO had some uh, chemicals, mm. so they have been fighting the swarms that are coming to Uganda along the border, mm. which has helped a bit, but uh, we are also going to get it back mm. uh, any time we get the chemicals in, uh, in Uganda. We had problems of getting chemicals from Japan because of this. Everybody, even there, there is a lockdown, mm. so we had problems, but we have negotiated with the World Food Program, the UN organization, which you know, to help us to transport the chemicals from uh, Japan to Kenya. Uh, we, we have concluded that uh, bit, and we are sure that the chemicals will be here in two weeks. In two weeks. Now, with all this effect, how are we holding up with regards to food security as a nation when this affects uh, the locusts, when they affect the food security in subsequent months? Well, yes, we have a problem. We are sitting every day in the ministry. We have come up with a strategy mm. uh, to uh, have to, to, to handle the issue of food security and even nutrition security. Okay. Uh, both food security and nutrition security. We have come up with a strategy. Mm. Uh, we think we should uh, uh, sus ha have enough food for our people. Mm -hmm. uh, we should also be able to prepare to grow more in surplus to be able to supply the region mm -hmm. and even other uh, potential markets because elsewhere mm -hmm. certainly uh, there is rooming hunger that people will have no food in the region and they will depend on us. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, prepare ourselves, to plan ourselves properly mm -hmm. to make sure that we really uh, we are food to secure ourselves, mm. but we plant and grow more food, uh, targeting the regional market and other markets elsewhere. Talking about uh, the regional markets and um, emphasizing that farmers are going to go back to the farms to, to farm, um, how are you helping these farmers? Honorable, put yourself in my situation, for example. 
if I have a farm in Zerobwe and I have no sticker to access my farm, what are you doing as a Minister of Agriculture to help me, the farmer, to access my farm and do my cultivation and possibly harvest the, the bumper harvest that's already underway? <laughs> no, if you want to really, it's really, if you want, uh, there are things that we cannot, uh, we cannot compromise with. Mm. Certainly, you know that uh, the health regulations, you have to stay where you are. Mm. Uh, for the time being, but this is for for this time. The strategies we are coming up with will be certainly will handle the short time. The mid mm. in the meantime, we are mobilizing people who are already there, who are mm. already in the villages, uh, to 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 grow more food, to prepare land for growing food. Mm. You, at this time, you can grow more cassava, you can grow more potatoes, you can go whether sweet potatoes or Irish potatoes, you can grow more food at this time. Mm. So those who are there now, in the short run, should really increase acreage of mm. production uh, of food and other uh, uh, vegetables and fruits. But uh, for you who are still here in Kampala and you want to cross to zero, mm. wait a bit. Let's uh, wait for the 21 days because we don't want you to take the, the, the COVID uh, on the other side. On the other side. So th but those who are already there, mm. who are already in the field, who are already in the villages, please, mm. uh, they should really increase uh, acreage. We have sent tractors to every district. Mm. Which tractors you can use? You mm. just put, you just get money for fuel, the tractor is available. Mm. Uh, we, uh, very few districts that didn't get tractors, especially those in the hill, in the mountains. But mm. others, at least, there is about three or four tractors in every district. But there are also other tractors from the private sector. Mm. Please, uh, I think uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, you know, opportunity now, which we should uh, uh, have, uh, which we should really aim at and make sure that we. We use this opportunity. Not everything is bad. Mm. COVID is killing our people. It's killing everybody else out there. Uh, here, our, some of our people have been uh, affected and infected. Mm. But still, we can uh, get this as an opportunity because Uganda can grow many types of food, including fruits. Mm. Other countries depend on one crop or one item. But now, Uganda, you can grow the fruits, you can grow the vegetables, which are badly needed in Europe now. Honorable, let's and talk uh, about the seasons. You that, uh, um, Honorable, let's talk about the season. We are in a season which seems to be possibly good for tilling the land and, uh, of course, uh, planting. How ready are our Ugandan uh, farmers and how have your ministry supported them to make sure that regardless of the pandemic crisis the nation is uh, going through, that they still stay on course and do the due, the, the due work they should do so that we don't have a food shortage in the subsequent months? Yeah, we have uh, worked, uh, we have worked with uh, NARO, our, one of our uh, organizations. Mm. NARO is a part of MAIF. This is the National Agricultural Research Organization. Mm. We have uh, new varieties of beans. We have new varieties of uh, maize uh, and others, cassava uh, uh, and uh, soya beans mm. and all the other oil crops uh, from research. We are now ready to provide the good seeds to our farmers. As I said, we, are, we have also been uh, 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 trying and we have made it possible for farmers to use tractors. Mm. Uh, we have uh, we are handling the issue of inputs. We have strengthened our systems of uh, certification and inspection. Uh, now we follow up the, 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 the chemicals and inputs that are being used in agriculture and, mm. uh, and the uh, animal industry. Mm. We have imported vaccines for uh, vaccinating our cows against FMD. So we are on the ground as Maif, and uh, we are really helping our farmers to make sure that they are able to produce uh, for today and uh, for the future. 
we really want government to come in and put more funds and mm. you know uh, in the sector to make sure that we are food secure and we are able to produce more for the country and for others out there well, let's talk about uh, some of the, 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 the biggest effects you've made with the lockdown uh, of COVID-19 in the fight against locusts. I want us to expound more about the locusts because it's something that is on the low key because everyone is looking at the pandemic of COVID-19. But how has COVID-19 affected the fight against the locusts? Well, we, we, we've had problems of getting... Uh, chemicals mm. and other uh, other tools to use on the ground because you, you remember the first fight mm. the, the some of the pumps got spoiled some of the gears that the, the people use uh, got torn out so we had to re-equip our, 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 our uh, people on the front line so we had problems of getting but now we are sorting it out mm. and uh, we are getting some supplies from our suppliers but uh, it was uh, really tricky at the beginning when they reinvaded when the locusts came again mm. and they invaded us we, we had to again look around and this was the time of uh, uh, the covid lockdown mm. and uh, we had the issues but now we are stabilizing and uh, our teams are really the UPDF mm. and the other supporting teams are now working on the ground. They, 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 these uh, locusts are so, they are young and destructive. They really consume everything green, mm. but they are not allowed by the UPDF and those teams to settle. So they, they have not done much havoc to, to our fields, to our farmers, to our gardens, but still we know that uh, they, are, they, they are destroying food crops in some parts. Mm. So it is a bit of a problem, but uh, we are handling it. Edward. Let's talk about the communities where these locusts are. What has government done to, um, to sensitize them, for them to be in position to understand um, uh, the challenge that awaits them? And how are they holding up as communities? Because this has not been given a, a 360 coverage in the media. How are these communities holding up? We are uh, really uh, discussing in government mm. about how we can uh, provide more seeds, more planting materials in terms of cassava stems, in terms of uh, potato vines and uh, other, uh, you know, uh, uh, seeds for pulses which grow faster. Mm. We are discussing with the government, with the Minister of Finance, and uh, we have already informed the His Excellency the President that we need to support the farmers to grow more, even out there, even in the areas affected by the, the locusts. Mm. You know, these are large areas and these are large production areas. These are parts of Bukedi, parts of, of uh, Teso, parts of Kalam Kalamoja region, uh, Choli uh, region, and Lango. Mm. This, this is a huge uh, part of uh, our country, uh, and we need to support them. To, as we fight the locusts, they should not just sit and say, we, let's wait for the locusts to go, they will destroy our food, because they have been uh, worried and they don't want to grow food. But now we are mobilizing them to grow food and make sure that they, uh, we, as we fight the locusts, by the time we, the war ends of the locusts, mm. we, we, we have food. So we, we just let it be destroyed, but we should have it. <laughs> on, uh, but it will not be destroyed because mm. we are there. So we really want to mobilize our farmers to produce more food, even those in that region where mm. the locusts have invaded us. Uh, let's talk about the funding. Is the ministry getting adequate funding with regards to the fight of the locust? Your previous request from the parliament, uh, um, uh, from the parliament, and to endorse the minister of finance to endorse uh, for your execution on the ground, was it endorsed? And how are you holding up with regards to funds? Yeah, for locusts, uh, as I told you last time, uh, apart from the first 
22 billion, mm. which we divided in, in two parts. Mm. And one part, 11 billion went to DLC or East Africa, and we used the 11 billion. We have not got any more funding, but we hope they will get more money because now we are likely to, uh, to, to, uh, to get stuck mm. <laughs> somewhere along the way, but I think they are handling it. Uh, also, finance and MAIF, we are sitting even this morning to see how we can forge ahead, how we can, uh, how the sector can be fin uh, funded to support the farmers, mm. to support the small, medium, and large scale farmers to make sure that we, 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 we don't lose the opportunity that is available now. We are the only country that is has the potential now to produce for the biggest part of this world, for the mm. biggest part of the region and even the, the other parts of the world. So finance certainly uh, must uh, agree, must help us, must work with us mm. to make sure that we get the necessary funding to support the sector, to be able to produce enough food for this country enough food for the region so that our farmers benefit from uh, uh, this uh, problem. It's, and uh, even our people, including traders, mm. this should not, COVID has affected us, but we could see opportunities uh, along the way. Mm. Okay, Honorable, I don't know whether you've um, taken a little um, a stroll in the markets of late. Here in Kampala, food is on the surplus in the markets, but people cannot afford it because of the lockdown. The means of movements have, in one way or another, sabotaged the buying of this. This surplus food on the market, in any way, does it paint for you a picture that we have too much food and we don't have enough markets? How best can we create more markets for our foods in the region? By the way, there is a lot of... Uh the, the supply of bananas is really uh, good. There is, uh, we have bananas all around, and they are being sold. The bananas are sold cheaply. Um, maize flour, I think, uh, I don't know why the, the, the prices would go up, because we, don't have, we still have a lot of maize in the field. But uh, our farmers and other uh, traders, uh, are still holding on their maize. They think the prices will go up. Uh, so that some of our people are holding their maize because the maize belongs to the farmers and the traders. But uh, um, other types of food, sorghum, potatoes, we really have enough. The problem is I've been mobilizing our people, uh, including traders, to make sure that they really bring the food to the town. There is a lot of food out there, especially the fresh food, bananas, potatoes, they should, uh, and the trucks are allowed to ferry the food to, to the city and the other t bigger towns. I think uh, there is no reason why we should have hiked prices of food in this country now, only that people are holding on the cereals because they know that the Legion, because people are buying people from Rwanda, you know, from Tanzania, and other parts of the region are coming to buy the maize. So they are holding on it, speculating also uh, in a way. But uh, the food is available. We still have enough food, and uh, that's why we need to even prepare land and grow more food. Uh, government must invest in uh, irrigation support our farmers to be able to irrigate even when it, the rains go. Uh, we need to support our farmers to have the, uh, you know, good seed, which we are trying to do now. So I think really, uh, and we should help our farmers to make sure that they can uh, store the food and maintain quality and the standards of the food. Mm. So we are looking at all these areas and this is where we need the support from government as a sector to make sure that we are able to build the capacity internally to produce enough, uh, store, and even process the food uh, to, 
and add value to our uh, products. Honorable, let's talk about the animals. We have exhausted a little bit of the locusts and the food. Let's talk about now the, han the, the, the animals in the nation. Do we have something new with regards to our animals as regards to the current state where we are? The animals? Yes. Cows yes, the and animals. the likes. Uh, we, are, we are already undertaking and we, we are waiting for, uh, again, funding mm. from uh, government. We have already prepared ourselves to, uh, to uh, do a census mm -hmm. for animals. Uh, through the agricultural census, which is going to happen soon. Uh, we, we really want to make sure that uh, we have all the details we need. And this time, as we look for external markets, certainly the issue of for registration of farmers, um, registration of uh, our stock, our animals, is very, very important. We can't do anything without proper data without proper information. We are prepared to do this and we are going to do it. And uh, this time we, uh, we need to, uh, uh, to know uh, the types of uh, animals that we have in the country because even the markets out there mm. uh, have preferences. They know what they want they, and they buy, they pay differently for different types of beef. Mm. So we have to know uh, the saiwalas, we have to know the, uh, the balans, we have to know the types of cows we have, we have to know the goats, we have to know the pigs, we have to know everything must be known in there, not only as groups, but in their own, in their different uh, categories and, and uh, types and, uh, and uh, even genes, including the parental line mm. so, so we need to go there we need to, to to do that and this is what we are aiming at and once we do that then we'll be able and we'll be ready and this should really not take uh, the whole of this year before mm. the end of this year we should be ready to, with this kind of data mm. and information let's talk about the the, the 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 cattle keepers who would like to take vaccines to their farms and they're now locked down uh, because of COVID-19 and their farm managers are stuck and yet it was time we due have, for vaccination. We have recalled our extension teams. Mm -hmm. We have recalled our veterinary staff. We have uh, already mobilized them and uh, sensitized them. We have given them movement permits. Mm -hmm. They are now able to move to, 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 to the regions. They are able to move to the farms. Uh, they have been given enough facilitation, including uh, transport and uh, fuel and uh, other uh, support facilitation, like mm -hmm. allowances, to be able to reach the farmers. Uh, even now, we, we eat meat. We, the meat must be inspected. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the cows must be treated properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, therefore, we need our staff on the ground and... Uh, we have organized ourselves and our systems are now working and uh, even vaccination is going on as I talk now mm. in the valley in the different parts of this country. Okay, Honorable, right there, uh, farmers who have lost animals during this lockdown, is it possible for them to apply uh, to the NADS uh, program after the lockdown that they could get more animals, at least for the next season? Yeah, the supply of uh, inputs, including um, the animals, including others uh, from NADS, has been uh, has been affected mm. certainly. Uh, but uh, uh, as we move on, we see what we can do. Mm, uh, we can really give out animals to some of the uh, farmers. After the COVID, after this problem, I think uh, that one can wait. What could not wait was the supply of seeds because mm. the planting uh, has, uh, uh, depends on the season, mm. Mo majorly, majorly. For some of our farmers who don't use water, who don't irrigate, 
Mm. But uh, for those who depend on the rain season, we had to supply the seeds, and the seeds went. And even now, some people are still planting. Mm. But uh, for animals, I think we can wait for uh, the end of this lockdown. Honorable, uh, could the list of contacts of uh, extension workers be provided to the public? Or where can the public find the, their contacts that they can call them and they let them know of what is happening on their farms and how best they can mitigate it? That's, that's very, very, very important. Hmm. Uh, we have uh, asked, the, the, we have instructed the extension workers, the, including the veterinary uh, teams hmm. who are part of the extension, of course, and other agricultural and crop inspectors and extensionists, mm. we have asked them to provide uh, their uh, telephone, their phone numbers to the farmers mm. so that they can, a farmer, if he has a problem with a cow, if the cow falls sick, the farmer can be able to call the veterinary doctor mm -hmm. to attend to his cows or to his cow. So we, we have asked them to do that using the FM radios and the TVs. They should be able to, and using other means, using the phones themselves, mm. they should be able to send their numbers to the farmers out there mm. so that they are in close contact, daily contact. Day and night they can be contacted mm. to help the farmers just in case there is need for uh, that help. Uh, Honorable, while you're winding up, some people want to volunteer in the fight against the locusts in these communities. Is there space for volunteers to, to, to work together with the ministries and other supporting agencies in the fight against locusts in those hit communities? Well, some people, depending on what, what uh, voluntary work they want to do, mm -hmm. but uh, if you are at the macro level, we have come, we have got people who and who have decided to support us. Those ones I will mention them at some stage. Mm. But uh, on the ground, wherever we go, many times the Eros ones, the people in those sub counties, villages, mm. and parishes come up to support our uh, UPDF and uh, UWA and the other teams, they come up to support uh, on a voluntary basis. But as, and we, we really recognize it and we, we are happy with that support. But uh, you know, voluntary work, you, 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 you may not depend, you have to have people who are on the ground, who have a command and a control, mm. who are under that kind of, you know, Mm. organization but if you depend on a, volu a volunteer who may come and may not come sometimes it's a problem you know what is happening on the ground mm. that whenever we are going to spray the the locusts mm. we have to sleep there we have to get the information before eight and we start mobilizing our teams lorries uh, and other tools the people, mm. and we go to sleep in the area where the locusts are. Mm. So volunteers may not do that all the time. They may get tired. But we welcome them if they are there. Mm. But we know that we have to work with the Eros 1s and we are look and the Eros 2s and the Eros 3s and the, even this districts. Mm. And we have, they have been working with us all along without any financial support. Mm. But now we have talked to the Minister of Finance to support the local governments mm. because it is really a very intensive job. Fighting the locusts mm. is one of the things that you cannot imagine here when you don't see them. Well, um, we are, we, we're having a technical uh, challenge there, but uh, that was Honorable uh, Bamalanga Chisempija, the Minister of uh, Agriculture and Animal uh, Husbandry in the Nation. He has highlighted a couple of issues with regards to food security, locusts, and of course the inputs with regards to our economy. But one big thing that stood out is the food security. How secure are we post COVID 19 and of course uh, post the locust uh, attacks in some areas that were hit? Now, take us for a break and we'll be back shortly.